This podcast is produced by Visionary Studios. Hey everyone, I'm Mitchell Rail. And I'm Wade Clausen. And welcome back to Let's Unpack That. Today we are joined by Isaac Tortorella. Welcome to Let's Unpack That. How are you, Isaac? I'm so good. Thank you guys for having me. I'm like super, super excited. Of course. It's an honor to have you here. Isaac, this is a moment because I don't know if you have listened to the previous episodes, but I feel like I've had this recurring theme where every single guest on the podcast is just my For You page. Mm -hmm. I'm like quarantine. It's just slowly but surely, like every single person. And I think you may be like the final piece of the puzzle. Like yeah. my entire For You page has now been interviewed. Like, <laughs> Oh, I think it's I think it's really funny because when I was like watching your podcast, I was like, oh, I've seen him. Oh, I've seen him. Oh, I've seen him. And it's like I'm like connecting all the dots. So it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. For those who may not know who you are, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Okay, so most people probably know me from TikTok. I'm from Massachusetts. I am in a really small beach town, kind of near the Cape, but like not really. I really started to get TikTok clout from like my wall and like doing really stupid things in my bedroom. And now just like bartend and serve over the summer. I go to college at UMass Amherst, going to Hawaii in like a month. So like that's really exciting. I feel like that sums me up pretty much. Oh, love that. I saw you posting about this. Why? Is it like study abroad or yeah. what is it? Uh, UMass Amherst does this like domestic exchange program, which is basically study abroad, but yeah. like in the US. Yeah. And so I go to Honolulu for four months. I'm like super, super excited wow. to well, get out of Massachusetts, not experience the winter anymore. I've had enough. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm one of those bitches who is like ready for California and like LA, as stupid as that sounds. But like, that's that's the move. So... Well, my best friend Lizzie lives downtown Honolulu, so if you need a friend Shut to hang out with, I got you. She's I like a model. Lizzie. She's I literally Lizzie. an icon. So, like, okay. I will What's connect happening? you because I feel like you would love her. I feel like you guys' positive, oh God, positive yes. energy would just be amazing. So mm. I will, I'll connect. I'll make that happen. <laughs> Isaac, so as you just said, you have your little TikTok moment with mm -hmm. your wall, your couch. What initially made you get into making content on TikTok? So I had really bad acne, went on Accutane, got off of Accutane, and I was like, felt like that bitch. I was like, this is the moment my skin is clear, and this is incredible. So I posted a TikTok, and I think it got like 50K views or something, and I was like, this is this is this is it. This is my claim to fame. I was like, it's it's gonna take off. Then we were home from COVID, and I was just trying to waste time. And I started filming, and somehow, in some way, just ended up where we're at right now, which is like really really fun. It's like this this thing that I've noticed a trend from like when you guys are interviewing people. It's like this weird like gay clout to like posting thirst traps and having no idea what's going on, um, and then you just end up where you end up. I feel like you definitely have had the thirst trap moments for sure. We all have. Really we all have. On the other side of things, like you're the one posting it. What is like your thoughts when you see people thirsting for you and like all like those like creepy comments? What do you think of all that? It's really weird. It was weird in the beginning because I was a person who didn't really get a lot of attention when I was like in high school and even like the beginning of college to like receive that type of attention. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then it like just got really weird with my DMs on like Instagram and things. I choose not to think about it. Cause it just like it kind of just like freaks me out a little bit. Yeah, know. just don't need to give it attention, and it doesn't exist, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you are bi. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about your experience growing up? What that's been like for you? I think it's a hard thing to like one come out as bi, but two, I have never been with a girl before. So like, I feel like a lot of people, obviously in the community and outside the community, I feel like don't believe me and I feel like that's definitely like a common trend with a lot of people that I've talked to which I think is like kind of a frustrating thing because if you're with a guy people just immediately assume that you're gay and I don't really let it bother me especially like when I'm like out and about like that's sometimes just like what I rock with because it's way easier than having tried to explain to anybody that um but then when you were the girl nobody believes you because I'm fruity from an outside perspective if someone sees me they're like that that <laughs> man there's no way and I'm like fair enough so it's just like kind of hard and it's been hard for that way um, but I didn't come out until like after high school because I didn't want to deal with any of that stuff. So I didn't really have any problems with like kids like bullying me or like kind of making fun of me. Um, mm -hmm. I think they all just like felt bad for me because they knew I was going through it. What was your process of self-discovery like? Like, did you always know you were bi or did you initially think you were gay and then you realized you were bi or what was that like? With everybody telling me that I was gay in middle school and in high school as just like happens, I think for me it was like confusing because I knew that I still really liked girls, but I was like just thinking that it was some type of like internal homophobia type B and I was like, that like must be what it is. For me, it just like reaches from where I was like, labels truthfully don't really matter 
that much for me personally i was like it like i can stick with this and then change or like whatever but it, at this point everything's a spectrum like me and my boyfriend constantly have conversations about this because he feels a lot of times like he's attracted to guys but then he's also like well there's like there's some girls that i like also still like so it's just like it's not like a 50 50 split like even if it's like 95 5 so it's kind of my my attitude on that so you guys are both by both mm-hmm. you and your boyfriend i think my boyfriend at this point is using queer now i'm like not 100 percent sure but like like kind of yes yeah I would say like yeah so you're in a relationship and you've shown that a little bit online how did you two meet tell us the story give us the story tell okay so this man in April uh came up on my for you page and I was like okay like he's cute this is like fun I like liked his post but I just like kept him going about my business he came up on my for you page again and I'm like okay you want to know what at this point let's just like hit the gas. So I went to his Instagram. I like screenshotted his Instagram because I was like debating whether or not I wanted to talk to him, which is like so funny. But I was like, okay, like he's from Florida. What's really the point in this? Like, it doesn't really make any sense. So I like sat on it for a few days because I'm like, okay, like he's cute. He's, he's artsy. He's an architect major. Like I'm like a STEM, STEM gal through and through. So I was like, this is like exciting something new. And then I DM'd him something so stupid on Instagram one day and then got his Snapchat and then we just started Snapchatting and the rest is kind of just like history. So how do you go from those casual online interactions to dating had you guys met before you started dating? Yeah, okay. So what happened was some random point in July like we, last, like July 2021. Yes, July of 2021. Sorry, yeah. So July of 2021, there was like this one night after I got out of work and we FaceTimed. I can't remember if we FaceTimed or we talked. We talked until like three o'clock in the morning and things were going really, really well that at that point I was like, oh my God, like I really, really like this kid. And I just like stopped talking to like everyone else that I was talking to. It was just like, this is like so fun for me. And I don't remember if I or he did jokingly was like, oh, just like come to Miami. Like this will be so, so fun. And I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm buying the ticket now. And he was like, oh, okay." So I bought the ticket to go see him at the beginning of the semester because he goes to school in Miami. This is like really bad because like I I don't lie to my parents at all, um, especially about like going to see a like boy that I've been talking to for a couple months. But I bought the plane ticket, didn't tell my parents at all went to school, had my friends from school the first week of classes drive me to the airport. I like flew down to go see him. My parents were like calling me while I was on the trip, just being like, oh, hey, what's up? How's school? And I was like, school's great. I love going to UMass Amherst. I'm not in like Miami at all. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, this is like, this is great. Like, ah, uh, this is so happy I'm back. This is like the first semester back. I'm like, this is like so fun. Meanwhile, I'm literally having one of the best weekends that I've ever had, like the absolute time of my life. He was so cool. It was like so fun to see like his friends too and everything. I'm like in the airport, I leave him. I'm like sobbing and I'm like going through TSA with like tears in my eyes. I'm like going to the guy. He's like, can I have your ID? And I'm like, yes, like you can, you can. I like realize like, I am in love with him. So I FaceTime one of my best friends and I'm like, I think like I'm in love with him, but like, is this like crazy for me to like say this to him? Like we've been talking for two or three months and like this is the first time we met. And she was like, you just need to like hit the gas. And so I was like, okay. So I fi- I call him. I'm like, listen, like I just need to tell you that I wasn't sure if I was falling in love with you um, before I went on this trip with you, but I realized that I'm in love with everything about you. And he was like, I love you too. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then maybe about like a week afterwards, we kind of had the conversation of like, so what is this? Like, what are we doing here? And I think we both just came to the terms of like, yeah, we're dating. And then I had to tell my parents and I was shitting myself because I was like, okay, how do I explain to my mom and my dad that I met this boy on social media, talked to him for a while, went to go see him in Florida for a weekend and they don't know about that. And like, now we're just like fully dating. It didn't go over well. (laughs) Um, They were um, a little upset and I didn't like talk to them for like, maybe it was like a week or so. And me and my parents have a great relationship. Well, you're an adult, Mm. you know, you can live your life. Not to my parents, I'm not that tough. Like I am, but like I'm not, not. Not to the point where they were like, hey, like you could have just let us know that you were in fact not in the state. And I was like, you're right. But I also didn't know. 
if if we weren't dating, like me and Ben didn't end up dating, I was like, okay, like what am I gonna tell my parents? Like I went to go to Florida to just see this kid, and, like give a little smooch and like leave. Like that's just like such a funny thing. I love such a cute story yeah, though, Isaac. Is. Like I was like just like so heartwarming, like to see that like love exists. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have been dating since. So we're are we coming up on a year then? Almost, yeah. So September sixth, I think, is our anniversary. I think no it is. Uh September sixth is our anniversary and yeah, so it's almost gonna be a year. It's been eleven months. And that's that's long distance mm-hmm. and that's long distance that is clearly working yeah. if it's been sustained yeah. for almost a year. And I think a lot of times Times, especially with social media, I think long distance has become more common. But mm-hmm. I think it also, at the same time, is known for being incredibly difficult to maintain and build that trust, have that trust, and also have those boundaries. As you were starting into that relationship, how did you kind of get to a place where you had that trust, you had that, that, that dynamic and level of communication where it worked? There were like really small things for me when it came down to like ultimately trusting Ben and like not really having to worry about anything like I found out through one of his friends because she posted a screenshot of like one of Ben's private stories but he had a private story this was maybe in like October like middle of October so we were dating for like a month a month and a half and it was like called like Tortellini's boy wife or something like that and I was like this man clearly is not doing anything else if he has a private story of like me and I was like that's just kind of what I I was like nitpicking things like if I was ever concerned but ultimately I were you on the private story or was it like no no so I wasn't on this private story that he like had um because he used to talk about me to his friends on that private story when we were it was just like picking up on little things like that and like ultimately just realizing that he's so incredible we just kind of started off with trust and it's always been long distance anyway. So I think we've always just had to trust each other that weirdly enough, it's kind of just worked out for us. Plus we see each other every like two months or so, or at least try our best to. And yeah, it's been like rocky sometimes as I think any relationship is. But I think the reason why it's not a huge deal for us is because the only real problem in our relationship is just the fact that we can't see each other all the time. Mm-hmm. So we FaceTime as much as we can every single day. We try even if it's for like five, 10 minutes because we're both working a lot. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. I have more power to you. Like yeah. I, uh, like, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. So I applaud you for doing it. And that's, it really <laughs> seems that you guys do have like that, mm-hmm. hate to use this word, but like a soulmate type dynamic, you know, like I think it really seems like it is a great connection and it is so genuine and real. I think that's so awesome and like happy for you that you have that because I think so many people get stuck in like relationships where people are just horrible. So it's so cool that you found someone that's actually real and from TikTok too. Like, yeah. That's so, I that's know, so crazy. Yeah. I mean, speaking of TikTok and your relationship, like obviously that's a big part of your life you know you're in a relationship you're spending the time on that relationship how do you go about reflecting your relationship on social media because I think some people go all in they go crazy some people don't show it at all as you were thinking about your platform and like the con- obviously I know you don't think that you're famous or like you I know that but it's like obviously you still think about okay how am I going to reflect this on social media like how, how am I going to share this with people like what was your thought process with that so I think it was funny because I over that summer was posting TikToks about Ben before Ben even knew that I had a TikTok in the first place. Um, And so he was always this like weird, like mysterious man for like a really long time because I think I was trying to figure out, I've seen a lot of people post their relationships on social media and it hasn't gone the best. I I just feel like it gets like messy. there's there's a hard line between like okay like what is acceptable and like what is like too much and so in the beginning I think I was posting just enough where it was like kind of funny people were like oh my god like who is this and I think the moment that we started dating I said who he was but after that I kind of don't really share a whole lot of anything like I when we're together for like maybe like a week or so every two months I don't really film anything I like post we both post like Instagram dumps of like each other but I feel like that's kind of the realm of what we both feel comfortable sharing not that we are like super like we don't want anyone to know about anything but I think it's important for us to like have a social media presence that is just us and they're kind of like on the sidelines and people can be like someone invested in that but like like, no one's following me just because of me and Ben or no one's following Ben just because of us. You know what I mean? And I feel like that type of thing is what we ultimately decided on. Yeah. Not that we feel like anything is going to go bad in this relationship at all, but we always kind of come to this conclusion of he is the right person and this is right for both of us. It 
it almost feels like it's the wrong time just because we're both in school and there's no end in sight as of right now where we can ultimately be together. But if the universe had me find him and him find me in a crazy circumstance, then it will find us always and forever. And I think that's kind of just like how we're rocking and rolling. So cute, Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> and for the people, yeah, it's so lame. It's so I like. It's so ushy mushy like shit. But but um, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's like I can tell you're being genuine. Though. Like, the way you speak about it, it's com- it's very like authentic and real, mm. which I think is really great. And yeah. it's so cool to have found that person. For the people that don't know, like falling in love feels like in real love. Like just describe it for us. That's what I can explain is he for the last 10, I'm gonna say even through the summer. So we'll go like for the over a year right now, he has been the first thing that I think of when I wake up and the last thing that I think of before I go to bed. And I think about him all the time. And I think for me, I just feel so, he, he's a person that I feel so comfortable with in a way that I'm not comfortable with anybody else and I think in all spectrums like come to him for advice go to him to just goof around or like just like shoot the shit I think having that in one singular person is what for me feels like falling in love it also feels like I'm constantly on a roller coaster all the time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um which is like kind of like stereotypical but I guess that's like what it feels like like he'll say something one day and like I just feel like again like I just like get like butterflies in my chest. When you look back at like the earlier states of like you guys talking and your relationship, how do you feel you guys got to that point where you really like clicked? For those who maybe want to have that dynamic with somebody, like Mm -hmm. how do you get there? I think for us being long distance has really helped us in that way because our relationship is 95% communication. Like it has to be, otherwise it won't work. I guess it's being okay with the fact that if either of us says something that might make the other upset, it it's being just being like, okay, like if I make you upset, that's great, but we need to talk about it. And like we putting everything out on the table, good and bad. And I think being okay with if we hurt each other's feelings, that's just like okay. In that way, that's kind of like how our relationship has flourish because we feel so comfortable saying anything and like how we're feeling. All of our FaceTime calls are us unpacking something or talking about something from our past because that's all we can do is talk. So I guess that's kind of how we got to being as open and comfortable as we are. When I think about that long distance dynamic and like you're in college, he's in college, and you have a following of people who thirst after you. Like that's just mm-hmm. that's just the reality, right? You already had said that you kind of just ignore a lot of those comments, but even like in person at school, like when people who maybe they don't know they're in a relationship and they try to like approach you, like how do you handle those advances? I'm just like, I I have a boyfriend. Like, thank you so much, but I'm like, I like I have a boyfriend. And I think a lot of people feel like relatively like respectful for that. People are like scared to talk to me. People might know me from TikTok or something like that, but like no one ever talks to me like from like UMass. They were just like scared. And so then I'd like go to class and then I'd like come back to my house and I'd like see like a DM on Instagram and so I'd be like, oh my God, like I just saw you like walking past the ILC, which if anybody goes to UMass, they'll know what the ILC is. But like, I was like, why did you not just say hello to me? I feel like it's weird that you saw me and didn't say anything. And like, like I was like, like now what? So it's just like funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, know. I think Isaac, you live at least it seems through your social, like, very authentically. Yeah. And I think that that confidence and, like, that almost, like, intimacy that you have in the way you portray yourself online, I think confidence is intimidating to people because a lot of people want it. They want to have that confidence. And I think even just, like, speaking to you both, like, in planning for this episode and in this, like, you can just tell that you do, like, live every moment, like, very authentically, which I think is so cool because it's so rare that people are so, like, authentically and real with who they are and just, like, so positive, which is just... Great energy to have. If I hit a reverse Uno here, I feel like you guys seem like, like <laughs> I would say the same thing. Like, you guys are out here. I'm not, listen, if I get a hype up, you guys are getting a hype up and I don't want to hear anything else from it. I think what you guys are doing is like a, such a cool, cool thing. And I hope that you guys know that like giving members of the LGBTQ plus community like a voice in this and really like getting a spectrum of people and having people listen to a podcast like this and really being able to like identify with whatever it may be is like such a huge thing because representation for us is like far and it's getting better but like it's still like not really there you guys are you guys are doing the most I think for us when this podcast was born like the whole concept was there's so many podcasts out there like call her daddy like etc they talk about relationships and it's 
really entertaining and popular, but like I really felt like there was a lack of gay perspective in those topics. So that's kind of like what mm. we try to do. And I think it's been really cool. And hearing the response from people is really what keeps me going and keep makes this whole all this yeah. work that all the work that goes yeah, into definitely. it. Definitely. Thank you for the hype. I appreciate yeah. it. But to go back from where I was going, so you you live Sorry. very authentically and you have a ton of confidence. For someone who's listening, who maybe wants to have confidence and be able to live authentically without like fear of like judgment or what other people think, what do you say to them? Like, what is the starting point in achieving that? This is like so stupid because I'm gonna be like, I really just like stopped caring. It's how I like I cope with everything because like I really don't get embarrassed anymore because I'm living with this new model of nothing is embarrassing unless you make it embarrassing. I don't know how much that like really works, but I think I really is like, who do I really care about in life? I care about my friends. I care about my family and I care about like my boyfriend who like really fits in the like everything. So those people and their opinions about me are who I care about. Everyone else, they can feel however they want to feel. They can say whatever they want to say. But at the end, at the end point, like it doesn't really matter. Like even going back to like high school, like some people like say like they like talk shit about me, which is like it is what it is. It happens. And I think in that moment I was like, oh, like I really like I really care about that. Like my image is like something that like I want everyone to like me. Mm -hmm. But those people, I don't even talk to them anymore. Like ever since I graduated high school, like three and a half years ago or however long it's been. And the reason why I feel like I kind of live my life authentically is like, I'm just living my life for me because I'm the only person for me. Like I'm the only person who wants to like enjoy life for anybody who is listening. Who's like, I really want to have confidence. Like I really want to like be whatever. I think one, it definitely is ups and downs and I don't feel great about myself like all the time. Maybe not been getting better at this, but I think I want to show more of a on my social media, like good and bad days. And like not everything is as what it seems because social media is fake. Like we all know this. And in doing this podcast too, like I'm very aware of like how I know like things are perceived by people on social mm -hmm. and like how I can kind of guess where the conversation will go. And like, I totally agree. Like it's so important to figure out ways to reflect the real shit. But then it's also tricky because like, I think people who like post themselves crying on social media, like then that comes off as like, I'm attention seeking, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, how do you authentically like show that and like hard stuff without it literally be like you in your bed, like with tears sobbing down your face? Like my boyfriend just, you know what I mean? Like that's like, cause then, cause <laughs> yeah. then, cause then, then it's like, oh, like, oh, Isaac's just here cause he wants attention. Like he wants us to be like, oh, poor Isaac. I totally agree that like social media needs to be real. It's so hard. Like how do you achieve that? There's I guess like, that isn't not really a, a question. There's not really a happy medium yeah like, it's either perfect, perfect or, or people are going to come after you you know like yeah. what is the you just realize that there isn't an answer and like people are just gonna poop on you for like like you can do no right anyways so i don't know i guess the other thing me and my big rambling moment that i had no one is ever fully confident even if they seem like it is and i think that's the big thing i think everyone thinks that there's this one answer and all of a sudden like you just wake up one day or you freak it out and like you're like that's it like, no one can stop me, and that's just, like, not how it works. To go off of your question, I mean, you come off very confident, but, like, what are things that you struggle with? Like, what are things, are avenues that you can improve on? Because I have sexualized myself in a way that I have on social media, and, like, I'm doing it less now than, like, I used to, or maybe I'm doing it differently. Why don't we say I'm doing it more tastefully than I used to? I think because of that, I have been really hard on my physical parents for a really long time. And I can now say that I feel like I've been better. But even in the moments where I was posting on social media and posting my body in the way that I was, I just like wasn't, I wasn't eating the best. Um, a lot of times, like I would just like only have like two meals a day instead of three or like I would just like yeah, it was just like not not the best in my brain when I first started posting, and this like wasn't the case, but this is what I told myself: if I post thirst traps or if I post my body and I look a certain way, that's what's going to get me to be able to like continue growing on my platform. And so I thought, like, if I eat my three meals, like, and like maybe I like work out like half the amount of time that I was like used to, then like that would be it, and like I just like wouldn't be in shape, and no one would watch me, and like whatever. And then I soon realized that like that's horrible. If people are only watching me for that, and like that's not what I want. So it took me a while to like get there and stuff, but I think it's interesting to see when people their when their presence is just their body. Yeah. And to like see how their mind works when like it's truly like the engagement, the likes, like it's the it's the satisfaction it's of having somebody want you. Yeah. With social media, uh it's 
in the beginning, I had a really unhealthy relationship and now I'm not posting as much, which makes me a little sad, but like, I think I needed to like take a break to figure it out. But how it works is like when a video does so well, you, it, you get like this, like, it's like this high of like, oh my God, this is like so sick. I like, I love this. And there's like no rhyme or reason, specifically TikTok. There's like no rhyme or reason why it does so well per se. But then you're like, this is like so cool. This is so great. It lasts like two days. And then like, and you want it to like, keep everyone, going. Everyone forgets about it, and then you like want to keep going. So You're then like, you keep. Oh my god! Like this is like yeah. Like, so like, like let's like, say just, like, let's say for example, you had like a video of you doing an ab workout. I remember you did. I remember. I remember in the past seeing you do videos of like the Pam Anderson. What is it? Whatever the ab workout is. Pamela, Pamela Reef ab workouts. I do still do them, and I do think they're really good. But yeah, but I remember you like posting about them, and like let's say one of those did really really well. Then I can imagine like millions of views. Like mm-hmm. I can imagine then you're like, hey, I'm gonna do more ab workouts because, and then you can continually trying to get to that that same metric right like it's like a it's like an yeah. addiction yeah and like i was doing the whole thing where i jumped around my room a lot of times and those videos consistently did really well and i was like convincing myself that i was like no this is not a thirst trap this is like just a goofy little video and i was like it's just not like that like that's yeah let's, let's circle back to the wall let's talk about like your what is like your passion for art like i want to go into like what is isaac passionate about clearly you love yeah. art you made that wall Mm-hmm. What does like your passion for art? What does that originate from? So my my mom's side of the family, especially, we'll just like say my mom uh, is like super super creative, and I think she. Growing up, we in my bedroom and in my sister's bedroom. So me and my brother used to like share a room. We would have Sesame Street characters painted all along our room, like a little scene. Then we had like an ocean theme where there was like coral reefs and whales and dolphins and sea turtles and everything else, which was like really, really cool. My sister had like a whole like fairies with like trees and everything like incredible. My mom is so talented, so creative. Like, so I've always been around that and I have always been like into doing creative things. I'm not artistic. I know it's, like, funny to say, like, with this, but, like, this isn't, like, I could never, ever, like, draw, like, a portrait of someone. Like, that's just, like, not my vibe. Like, I'm not good at drawing. But, like, doing things like this, I think... Because was that, was that, like, templated? Like, what was the process, like, of making that wall happen? Yeah, so basically what I did was I... There's, like, this one image from Keith Haring, and I basically copied that and then, like, sketched it out in pencil and then, like, painted it up. And that's kind of how we went about doing that. It's so cool. But in closing here, is there any advice that you would give people that are in college who maybe who are in a long-distance relationship or maybe are about to enter one or considering one? What would you tell them? Uh, I would say that uh, you have to take it day by day. You cannot think, like, what's going to happen, like, a week from now, two weeks from now, a a month, a year or two, because it doesn't do any good because life is so unpredictable and you have no idea what's going on. Because if I was to do that, me, Ben's in school for another three years because he's in a, a, like, accelerated master's program for architect and I'm graduating next semester. So if we sit here and think about this, okay, there is no end in sight of like when we will end up actually being able to like be together because I have my own plans of kind of what I want to do and he has his. So long distance, I think can only work if you guys keep it really like short term and recognize the fact that like you guys can still have like your own lives and like that's okay and kind of just like finding a balance of really how to incorporate each other in those the best that you can but like still keeping it separate and being able to do the things that you want to do that's that's kind of what i got but also like it's so not smooth sailing and you just gotta take it day by day take it day by day day by day day by day Well, thank you so much, Isaac, for taking the time to join us today. If people don't follow you already, do you want to give everyone your socials? Okay, yeah. So my TikTok is, I'm just going to spell it out. My TikTok is E-Y-E-Z-I-K-T-O-R-T-E-L-L-I-N-E. It's Isaac Tortellini, um, because I wanted to be quirky when I did. And then my socials, it's literally just my name, which is just like Isaac Tortorella. Thank you so much, Isaac. It was so great to have you on. You guys can follow us on Instagram at UnpackTHT and on TikTok at UnpackThatPod. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Isaac. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.